in, in, in Riverboat Ryan's voice. He's had enough. It's amazing how many different places that has become a problem. But Ninko, let's go to another game. Fact or fiction? Russell Wilson and the Broncos won't make the playoffs. Fact. Fact. I mean, have you seen them play? They look <laughs> terrible. Like, come on. The, the quarterback just had a shoulder surgery or a shoulder, whatever procedure to help him with. I don't know what he needs help with. But yeah. anyway, he's got four touchdowns and three interceptions. They need a lot of help. And it, they're not getting to the playoffs. Yeah, he know. wants to make sure you know how hurt he is. Uh, D. Wood. <laughs> Fact or fiction, Lamar Jackson will outrush Saquon on Sunday. Fiction. Fiction. Listen, Brian Dayball has done a great job of just scheming up this running game. This this offensive line for the Giants is doing a really good job in the in the running game, and Saquon Barkley is going to he's going to pop some runs against this Ravens defense that's real leaky right now. Well, I will tell you this: John Harbaugh and the Ravens know Saquon's the one who's coming at him. Listen to the coach in Baltimore. He's got to be public enemy number one for us. You know, he's uh, uh, you know then you know public enemy number one A is probably Daniel Jones, but Saquon Barkley is definitely the, the main guy. He's pretty impressive. So, look, the Ravens' defense is going to have its hands full with Saquon. He has led the Giants to the second-best rushing offense this year, 179 yards a game. The Ravens' defense, meanwhile, 12th overall against the run, 26th in yards per rush allowed at five per carry. So that is not uh, necessarily playing into their strength. I, I don't really have a more poetic way of asking the following question. <laughs> But the Giants, who were a team that I think most everyone, including all of their fans, thought were in the beginning of a rebuild, mm -hmm. are suddenly 4-1. and one. They're coming off a stunning win in London over Green Bay. And so I really think the best way I can ask this question is, D. Wood, are the Giants really good? Coaching. Coaching matters more in the National Football League than any other league. Huh. What Brian Dayball has been able to do with the parts that he's had on this football team has just been magnificent. He is, to me, the runaway coach of the year. And listen, I think it's too early to say that this Giants team is going to be a team that's going to be a playoff team or whatever the case may be. But the coaching job that they've done on both sides of the ball and maximizing that talent, there's no denying that coach staff is the real deal. Bartholomew, if they beat the Ravens on Sunday, hey, hey, there will be no way to ignore the Giants. Hey, pump your brakes, Greeny. I don't know about all that. Well, we'll see. If this was a fifth, we'll all be drunk. <laughs> but, I you, but I tell you what, listen, you, you, they've exceeded expectations. The fa fascinating matchup about this week is coordinator versus coordinator. Yeah. Because Greg Roman versus Wink Martindale, they've gone against each other, so he knows you know, the nuance of this running game for the Baltimore Ravens. We talk about the running game of Saquon Barkley. The run game of the Ravens is unique, you know, unique like no other running game. So I, I'm excited to see how they use the intel that they have against each other. That's a fascinating match between two guys that should be head coaches in this league. How, how big a deal is this game? What are you looking it's, at? It's, this is a defining game for the Giants. Against a good team, the Ravens team. We know the Ravens are a good football team. They're well coached. And, and you said something about Dayball, the head coach. And, and me and Dayball were neighbors for about three years, okay? I got a funny story. I'll, I'll indulge with everybody. Go. So I go over to Dayball's house, and he's, you know, just walk in the front door. And to the right, he had, like, a little office. It was just like a normal uh, – it didn't look like an office. It was more so just like a, an extra dining room, right? Okay. And on the shelf, he pointed out, see, look, those are all my playbooks. And I look over, I go – Wow, this guy must love football. He had a row of playbooks, like playbook, playbook, offense, 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 on every single place that he's been. And literally, that's what he loves to do. He loves offense. He loves coaching. And you saw that last week. You saw that in the passion with him throwing his fist, pumping yeah. his fist, because he was so excited that he got this team to be in a spot where we didn't think they would be. You know, the last couple of years, the Giants, ah, ha, ha, the Giants. But now they look like a respectable football team. So that's why I think – this team is in the proper position to have a competitive football game with the Ravens. I'm not going to say the Giants have arrived, but I think that this is a good measuring tool to look at the Ravens. You look at the Giants, where they've come and where they're at right now with the coaching, and Dayball loves to coach. I could tell by when I walked in his front door. I like that insight. I really yeah. do. And, Dan, I, I, this, this NFC East is sort of your old stomping grounds. Yeah. You're as surprised as everybody. About yeah, because right? it's been so long. But Dayball, see, to me, the remarkable thing about him is it's not about the playbook with the Giants, right? He's, he brought in Mike Kafka from the Chiefs Players. to call the plays. So Dayball sees himself. He wants to show everybody he can be a head coach. Yeah. Not just, he know everybody yeah. knows he's a good offensive coordinator. So he's establishing, you know, that the words like culture and all that kind of stuff that get thrown around a lot. But there's a difference there, right? And the other thing is like, I mean, he's thinking ahead, like. The Bears thought Saquon Barkley was public enemy number one, too, and they committed all these guys to stop him. Then all of a sudden, Daniel Jones is running these rollouts and scoring 20-yard touchdowns. So, like, 
coaching matters. And there's no question right now that through five games, and look, someday Giants fans will be screaming that this guy needs to be fired. Like, that's just the way of coaching, right? But right now, he has changed things there to an extent that the team and its fan base can feel good on a level that it's been a long time since they have. Leave those words up from Hembo on the screen. I'm sorry, I literally said that as you were taking them down. But if you can put them back up, there's no better sign of a well-coached team than the one that makes the right adjustments at halftime and change. Look at their numbers. In their four wins, they've more than doubled outscored that was the teams they've played. A couple weeks ago, before the Bears game, I was talking to Dayball about like how they want to try and win. And, and the word he used was, we want to keep it grimy and get the game to the fourth quarter yeah. because they don't the fact of the matter is like they're they're short their top four wide receivers right it's no insult to anybody but the guys they expected to be able to throw the ball to aren't there i think that's that bill belichick um type of philosophy right being around bill for so long most the nfl season week six let's look ahead d wood who's going to have more receiving yards as they go head to head justin jefferson or tyreek hill Justin Jefferson, I mean, you're talking about the Miami Dolphins. They're going to be going with their third-string quarterback against Skylar Thompson, you know, in this game. And we know with the Miami Dolphins, their secondary, their st secondary is still banged up. Mm -hmm. Boy, it could be, what you said, Barry, it could be like barbecue chicken out barbecue there for, chicken. for, for, uh, for Justin Jefferson in this game. So that's who I'm rolling with. He may have the biggest numbers of the whole league. Bart, who will have more rushing yards in this matchup at Lambeau Field, Brees Hall or Aaron Jones? I got to go. I got to go with Aaron Jones. I think they're going to run the ball on the Jets effectively. I think Brees Hall's value isn't just running the ball. As we saw last week, it's the fact that he can catch the ball. He's a great receiver, much like his uncle Roger Craig. So, listen, I know people think I'm giving the, the, the Packers some love. It's only because I'm going to give Brees Hall even more love. Okay, fair enough. Uh, so you say Aaron Jones, and if by that you mean Brees Hall, I agree with you. Uh, Ninko, <laughs> who's going to have more total touchdowns, Josh Allen or Patrick Mahomes? Oh, this is a tough one, Greeny, but I'm going to go with Josh Allen. He's, the guy's got four. 14 on the season. He had four last week. I, both of these quarterbacks are going to put up points. We know that. But I really think Josh Allen is on a mission. We saw that week one. We've seen him running over people, throwing DBs. So I'm going with Josh Allen. He's really motivated to, to really let the, the whole league know that he's the guy coming for that MVP race. Well, how much do you look forward to this game? I mean, we're calling it the trilogy here as these teams have played these epic games in recent years. And how about this? Kansas City's an underdog. It's the first time that they will be a home underdog since Patrick Mahomes became their starter. That's 42 wow. games. Mahomes' 7 0 oh, 1 career against the spread as an underdog overall. Again, obviously, all those have come on the road. Now, Graziano, you drew the best assignment of the weekend. You've got that game for us at ESPN. So, as you start talking to people on both sides, what are the most important things the fans need to know? Well, I think the, the Buffalo's on a mission that, that Nico just said. I think that's a really big factor in their, in their mindset, right? Like, they. They know they can play with this team. They know that if the coin flip in overtime had gone the other way, they, they, they probably advanced to the next round of the playoffs last year. This is the team that has eliminated them in the postseason in this building two years in a row, even though Buffalo won in that building in the regular season last year. So it's an opportunity for them to not just make a statement, but you know, to, to prove to themselves that they can go in and beat this team. And you know, logistically, the, to maybe ensure that the AFC Championship game is in Buffalo instead of Kansas City this year, if, if they get that far. So uh, it, it's, it's, a, it's a big game. I don't think anyone's soft-pedaling this one. And you remind me, that's right. They've actually played three times already. So this isn't yeah. the trilogy. What is it? The quadrilogy? What, 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 what's more than that? A quadrilogy? I don't know. We should have worked that Whatever out comes after. Show. I don't know. I don't theory. Purdue, theory. My it's, Purdue it's education. Someone uh, tell me. Doesn't give me the vocabulary. I think it's a quadrilogy. Whatever anyway. it is. Who needs this game more, Buffalo or Kansas City? Buffalo needs this game more. And you think about controlling your own destiny. Buffalo wants to host somebody at their place in the playoffs. And every single one of these games in the AFC is going to matter at the end of the season. You want to be able to control your own fate. We saw what happened last year. They're extra motivated this year. We have seen that. So, again, I, I think the Buffalo Bills to go in to Kansas City and beat this team is going to help them later in the season. And when they hit the playoffs and they're trying to put something together here for a